sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video, we compared some of the abiotic features of both terrestrial and aquatic environments. We're going to cover the next dot point now, and this is all about distribution and abundance. Oh, sorry, the actual dot point. It says identify the factors determining the distribution and abundance of a species in each environment. So, this word species is important. We'll go over that word species before we start. And what we have to do in this dot point, we have to identify what kind of factors affect distribution and abundance. So, we'll also have to talk about distribution and abundance and what exactly those are. So I'll start with species. So if you look at the actual here, we've got some pictures of a rainforest and a desert. And we've got two different mice. We've got this mouse here, which we can find in a rainforest. And this mouse here, which we can find in a desert. Now you might think, okay, they look quite similar. They're both mice. They might be the same species. Well, but the reality itself is they're not the same species. The definition of a species was that they're actually they can, they obviously they share very sim many similar features, which these might can, these two mice aren't do, but they also need to be able to produce fertile offspring. So these actually need to be able to have a baby together, and that baby needs to be able to reproduce as well. And that's the thing, these can't. So these look very similar, but they're actually quite different because they're both adapted to their own environment and they're very different, even though they look quite similar. So these are not the same species, these are different species of mice. Same with this, we've got two fish here. This is a freshwater fish, and this is a marine fish or a saltwater fish. And you might think they, they look quite similar, they should be able to have you know, babies together, but they're not, they're not, they're different species. So because they're different species, they actually cannot have fertile offspring, and the reason why they're different species is because they have to have different environments. They have had to adapt to those environments, which means they've just grown apart more or less. So species is just like a member of a species means they have to be actually really similar. So humans, even though all we have different races, so we're still all the same species. We can all interbreed. Now distribution abundance. Distribution means where we can find something. And abundance is how many. So for example, this here, this is the Spinifex hopping mouse, Australian Spinifex hopping mouse. Where can we find it? Well, we can find it in a desert. And how many? Well, overall, we can find not too many, just a few, because of different reasons, because of these factors that we have to talk about, such as food availability, um, competition, and the like. So we'll talk about that now, but species is just something which are very similar in terms of their features, but they can also produce fertile offspring. So for example, all humans are of the same species, but human and apes are different species. So I'll go for the dot point. So it says, identify the factors, which I'll do now, that determine distribution and abundance. Remember distribution was where we can find certain, certain animals, certain species, and abundance was how many. So first factor, this is factor number one, or I'll just call it number one, is number of predators. So that's that, that affects both distribution and abundance, because what you can imagine, the fox, the fox was introduced in Australia, and the fox is actually European, but when it came to Australia, it had very little, it had no predators. So it could basically do whatever it wanted. And now fox numbers have got, the fox itself is traveling across Australia, so it's it's spreading, we can find it, so a distribution, we can find it in more places. And the abundance is, there are more and more, so the, the, the population is growing. So not only are they spreading, but they're also growing in number. And the reason why is because they have very few predators. So the more predators you have, the less you have of them, so the less abundance you have of them, and the less places you can find them as well. But for the fox, here in Sydney and here in Australia, it has a really good environment, which is why there's quite a few of them. A number of competitors. That's a bit like your, so number of competitors is different to predators. Com competitors are the ones who want to have the same, f looking for the same food or same shelter. They're not necessarily trying to kill you, but they're just trying to get the same stuff that you want. And the example here you can give is, is maybe the plants. So for example, in a rainforest, we said that there is, that there's very little light because they're all, there is, you know, lots of trees on top and they're taking away the, the actual light from the bottom. So there's lots of competition for light 
in a rainforest, which is why we can find we can find distribution, we can find different plants there. But overall, the numbers are generally, it's very competitive, so only the fittest will survive. And if you don't, if you're not fit, if you can't climb, if you don't have some way of getting that sun, then you will die out because you don't have enough food. Sun is food for plants, or you might not have enough space. So the competitors affected, the more competitors you have, the less of the species there will be there, so the less abundance and less distribution as well. Number of mates. Now this is mates is talking about offspring. So obviously even if you don't have a mate yourself, you might not die, but if there's no mates, if they can't find each other to have offspring, babies, then they will eventually, the species will die out. So we need to have enough males and females to be able to reproduce. So if there are fewer numbers of mates, that means the species will go down, so both distribution and abundance will go down. Whereas if we have higher number of mates, then the distribution and abundance will go up. Now the availability of food, this is how much food we can find. Obviously, generally animals like to find food, and this is quite general. So the more food a certain species can find, the more abundance there will be. So abundance as in if they have lots of food, then they can reproduce lots more, and those offspring will survive, which means the numbers will grow. And the food needs to be specific. So for example, distribution, this talks about distribution. A let's say a bird needs to have certain not just food but certain kind of food to survive, then it's only going to be around the places where you can actually find this food. So if it needs to find certain worms, then its distribution is wherever those worms are. So that's how it affects distribution. Availability of food affects both abundance and, and distribution because every species has their own certain food it likes, which means it affects the death how it affects the distribution. And the more of that food is, there is, the more abundant they are as well because they can reproduce and reproduce. Now the higher the amount of disease, obviously, will, so the more disease, the lower the numbers, the lower the abundance. An example you can, you can think of is Tasmania. There are the Tasmania tiger, which lives somewhere around here. And the Tasmanian tiger has a cancer epidemic. So many of the, the actual Tasmanian tigers are infected with a cancer. And that's severely affecting their numbers, their abundance. It's, their abundance is going down because they're all dying off because of this actual cancer, the disease. So the more disease there is in any given area, that affects their how many there are. And ideally, the ones that survive are surviving in the areas which are, are located away from the disease. So obviously the distribution if it finds a pocket where there's no disease, then that pocket will be higher populated because there's more chance of survival. So that's how it affects both abundance and distribution. And all of these were something called the abiotic factors. So we said, sorry, the biotic factors. So we said that the biotic means living. So this, all this is all has to do with living. So number of predators, number of competitors, number of mates, availability of food and disease, these are all living things. This is how living things can affect a species. And when it comes to the other ones, so when it comes to non-living things, for example, temperature. Obviously, you can find different kinds of animals maybe in the desert compared to a rainforest. But that can be due to both temperature and water availability. So temperature, so you're obviously going to find different animals. So the distribution is affected because you're going to find animals which are adapted to high temperatures in the desert and animal adapted to lower temperatures maybe somewhere else, maybe in the rainforest. Um, or shrublands or woodlands. So distribution is affected by having only the ones which are both best, best adapted to environments being found there. And overall abundance is also affected because after a certain point, let's say, you know, maybe above 50 degrees Celsius, there's less of water available. When it's too hot, that means that you have things dying and that means abundance. Even if you can find stuff there, the abundance itself will still be lower because the temperature is too high. The availability of water, same thing. This is these are all obviously abiotic factors, and you're gonna have things where there's more water. You're gonna have more abundance usually. More water means more abundance because all living things need water. So more water, more abundance. And the things that if you're living in a desert, you're gonna be very adapted to it. So you're gonna find only desert distribution of desert animals or uh, animals that can survive low water levels would be in an area like a desert, whereas Animals that can survive very high temperatures and very high water levels would be found in rainforests, for example. That's how distribution is affected. 
salinity and pH. Well, pH, again, we have some plants preferring a certain pH. Some plants prefer a pH of about 5 to 6, whereas other plants prefer a pH of around about 6 to 7. So distribution, you're only going to find those plants that are best adapted to those pHs in those given areas. And salinity, that's how much salinity refers to how much salt there is. So how much salt. And overall, like for example in the ocean, so in the ocean you're going to find distribution of very salt tolerant fish. So marine fish are salt tolerant and you find them in the ocean. Whereas non-salt tolerant fish, you're going to find them in the freshwater area. So again, salinity affects the distribution, what kind of animals you can find there. The availability of gases. Now, if, for example, you were to heat up a river, so a river is very vulnerable to change in temperature. If you heat up a river, like, for example, industrial waste, you put industrial waste into the river, which heats it up, that will increase the temperature. And if that temperature is increased, then we have less oxygen because the dissolvability of oxygen goes down if it's increased in temperature. And as soon as that happens, as soon as the oxygen availability goes down the river, that means lots of animals die. So lots of animals, especially fish, die when they have less oxygen. So availability of gases are very important for both abundance and distribution. Oxygen is needed for all animals and carbon dioxide is needed for all plants. So the more you have of that, the more life you'll find there as well. And when it comes to availability of light, again, when we're talking about, for example, what you can find deep in the ocean, so deep in the ocean, it's going to be very different to what you can find on top of the ocean because the ones that you can find deep in the ocean are creatures or, or fish adapted to very low light levels, whereas the ones you can find on top are adapted to very high light levels. So availability of light has a big effect on distribution. And also in abundance, overall you generally can find more, the more light you have, the more living things you can find there. So the more higher abundance for things which have lots of light, generally speaking. Not always, but generally speaking. So these were the factors, number of predators, number of competitors, number of mates, availability of food and disease, these were the biotic factors and temperature, water availability, salinity, pH, availability of gases, and availability of lights. These were the abiotic factors, so non-living factors. And overall, they affect the distribution, so where we can find stuff, and the abundance, how many we can find, quite a bit. Because, yeah, like, for example, if you have more food, you'll find more abundance, more living things there. Whereas, if you have less water, you'll find less of it there. So it depends on the actual um, creatures you find there, depending on the abiotic and biotic environments. But usually that means that whatever is found in an environment is best adapted to its both its periodic and its abiotic factors. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.